So as we begin this call, I welcome each one of you to this field of resonance that we call Earth's heart resonance. An ancient field, if you will vision it, of pure energy directly from source, however you may look at source, however you may feel source. And I want you to know that in this field of source, each one of us is equal and more powerful than we have ever imagined. And in this power of imagining, I want to call in the ancestors. I want to call in the guardians. I want to call in the elementals. I want to call in all life forms that exist within this planetary experience we call Mother Earth and humanity, whether we understand them as living forms or not. I call them from the East. I call them from the South. I call them from the West. I call them from the North. I call them from above. I call them from below. I call them from within this heart of Mother Earth in which we all dwell. Take a moment to greet those who are coming into your presence right now. Know that these amazing energy beings are your guides, are your family, that there is no separation, there never has been a separation, and the only separation we experience is truly an illusion. Thank you all for being here. I bless you and ask that the messages that everyone wishes to bring forth come through clearly and spoken loudly bravely and with pure heart intentions a whole thank you uh -oh. so let's take a deep breath and bring that into the cellular level of our beings meeting on the crossroads between the north the south the east and the west we meet our ancestors we meet our lineage we meet our familiars we meet the divic kingdom below us that we work with and the angels and the star people and the star nations above us who are gathered here to help us on this sacred path of evolutionary dowsing, of evolutionary consciousness as we come to this great crossroads, this time of planetary change and transformation that's so unique that we all were born into this time that we've been waiting for. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. And as we approach this amazing time, when the sun is the highest in the sky in the Northern Hemisphere, the summer solstice is coming up. We're in this amazing energy that's pouring down through the central sun, through the solstice, but also through the eclipse. So we're in this power time of transformation when we really do want to gather those that are in the light to assist us to make this opportunity to becoming pillars of light, this opportunity to uh, stand in the truth of who we are. So if we were indigenous and if we were Mayan, we would be soon entering into the cave of the stillness deep within the earth or going within uh, uh, one of the sacred sites like Palenque 
and there would be a, in the sacred site would be a place for us where we would be able to go underground and there would be a slab of stone which would be solid granite that would we would lie upon and all of our cells would be aligned north and south with the granite that we lay on so the, all of our biochemistry was aligned with the north and south magnetic forces running through the earth and as we meditated and let go and we would only have water and no food we become aligned more and more in the darkness to the pulse of mother earth becoming one with her and as the sun in the morning begins to come up we would be up before the sun on the morning of the summer solstice and we would be out in a sacred place and exactly pointing at the point on the horizon when the sun would come up over the horizon and strike us in the third eye, at which point that light would bless us and initiate us as beings or pillars of light. So I hope that you all have this opportunity to do whatever ceremony that you're called to in preparation for this auspicious time that we're about to enter into here in the Northern Hemisphere. And if you're in the Southern, this will be the winter solstice where uh, you have the ultimate opportunity to then go and do the deeper work in the shadow world. And for this unique time that we're gathering, I feel truly blessed to share what little wisdom I have. And I'm so open and excited to hear the wisdom and truth from each one of you on today's call. So we just like to open up the call and uh, allow you to step forward and speak from your heart of what's, um, what's passing through you, what's coming to you from your ancestors, from your feet on the ground, from Mother Earth. What, what's happening in your life at this time of personal and global transformation? And with that, I'm complete. So this is your time to share and to, to bring forth what's churning in your heart or what has you in peace in your heart and to share with the group as we become one with the energies that are flowing through Mother Earth and through us and from the stars through us to Mother Earth. I've got a message. All right. Yeah, what I'm seeing is that this is an opportunity to renew ourselves. Yes, we know there's a pandemic in any way we see it, but we don't have to be in the vibration of, in it, of it and in it. What I'm seeing is that I'm tuning into that we need to get back to the earth. Uh, as obvious as that sounds, what I'm saying is that to go back, to take off our shoes, ground ourselves, and to make it a practice. Yes, we can say it, we can do it, but this is an opportunity to tune in to ourselves. And we hear that, but one might say, how do we do that? When I tune in, I'm getting that. We need to, uh, the best way to do it is that to, to, to tune in is to journal, get a pen and paper, uh, get off of the computer. For some reason, that doesn't have good energy right now. Get, it's kind of like going old school, what I'm feeling is that, ground yourself and you could do this before or after and just write um yeah what i'm getting is that is to write a love letter back to ourselves and just it's almost like have a conversation with your body it's like it could be a spirit and body conversation so you could write a journal and journal it ask questions and bring ourselves back to the inside and to remember who we are blessings no oh, i love that thank you eduardo thank you I was thinking how powerful that would be to write a letter uh, from our future selves, which is already wholly enlightened and knows that they have arrived. I mean, we're all enlightened. The only thing in the way is ourselves, but wouldn't it be amazing to have that letter 
uh, to the ourselves in this moment, talking about this time and what to remember from that point of having already arrived. And what if we could then have that experience of uh, stepping into that awareness of how already arriving that we've already arrived, that we get from the future. And how about if we could step into it in this now moment? Wouldn't that be incredible? What if we allowed ourselves to be fully enlightened in this moment so that there was nowhere to go and nothing that needed to be done? I mean, wouldn't that be incredible? And would we allow ourselves to do that? And if not, why not? And if not now, then when? That's beautiful, Tyson, because as we know, time is a man-made convention, and it takes us out of this structure of societal beliefs and what have you. I love that background music that's going on in somebody's channel. That's pretty interesting. What's, what's also interesting and in coming up is I share with each of you that the moment of pause between each of us speaking is really important. What we've learned in this dowsing circle that we've created is take a moment and we're all uh, filled with this energy right now. And to take a moment and come into um, that sacred stillness um, and, and speak from your heart, which you have, Eduardo, and I. I appreciate that. And what I'm, what I'm hearing is something that I turn to and you talk about taking notes and writing. Um, every, this, this book is written over five years. There's more messages in this book than I will ever be able to probably put into a book. But the page, <laughs> and so this is what we do when we talk in circle is, yeah, beautiful, is to, Write what down. What, write down what comes to us because it's the gift of Mother Earth's voice in a harmonic vibration that we really can't uh, verify in a rational manner. It's it's energetic, and this is what we're we're learning is to tap into this energy, and this energy is really the presence of who we are. And what was struck me as Tyson just spoke and, and you spoke was, this is what's written on this page. And this is, was a random opening when I first came into the room. Inner fullness occurs when your heart allows meaning and purpose to arise in the moment. Mm. And this is the gift of remembering, remembering who and what we are outside of time, outside of illusion. So I just offer that to the field, uh, just as a confirmation of the energy that I'm feeling now in this space. Thank you. Claudia, did you want to say something? I'm good. I'm you're good? good? I know you're good, but would you like to say something? <laughs> oh, I didn't realize I was unmuted. <laughs> Um, no, I'm good, thank you. All right. So somebody's got a radio on in the background, so if you could mute yourself or turn the radio off, that would be great. So what is coming up for other people 
in this group as we begin this about um, the energy and Mother Earth that is really speaking to their hearts at, at this time. What is the Earth heart resonance um, calling forth in you? Uh, what's coming up is um, starlet noise, too much noise, too much noise. Basically, the sit inside of ourselves, sitting inward, going inward and sitting in that stillness and experiencing what it is to be in that non- mm, it's a wordless place. It has no words. Being with that place and sitting in it and not, not having words, just allowing it to emerge. And you may not have words right away, but you can observe yourself. Once you tap into that wordless place, it gives you what you need to come back with to, to go forward. And it began to materialize in ways that really unexpectedly. It's almost like meeting yourself somewhere that you didn't even know that you could meet yourself. So that's what's coming up for me in being in that place. That's, yeah. I'm finished. Thank you. Robin, is there anything coming through you? Very quiet, Charlie. Indeed. So that means we um, have people in a place where the energy is holding them. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, this is, again, part of our journey as a group uh, with Tyson and Shelley and several others has been this experience of sitting in circle and really trusting the silence, as you spoke about. And that in that silence is a really uh, a deepening with the source of creation, however you have been taught or however you believe. And looking at it by pulling all the labels off. And when we come to that place of stillness that we speak of and we talk about, and we let go of the labels, it doesn't mean we're disrespecting anything. What it means is we're allowing a level of our consciousness, our multidimensional consciousness to open. And it's like the lotus opening, it's the flower opening to receive the rays of light that the flower needs to not just survive, but to create the beauty, the radiant beauty that it expresses in its own unique way. So this is what's coming through me now is each one of us is, the, uh, is one of these beautiful flowers that we embrace on physical Mother Earth. As her expression, she's not just one flower. She's not just one tree. 
She's an abundance, an array, if you will, of beauty, of perfection. Even when we as humans see things as distorted or destroyed, Mother Earth has no concept of that. Mother Earth is the primordial basis of our survival here in these physical forms. And this is where it comes from, is that inner heart of Mother Earth, that radiant field within her and expresses through us as we let go of this third dimensional hold that we have on things. So part of this evolutionary process we call the sacred evolution, that we call it safe, sacred evolutionary dowsing, was based around dowsing. We are all dowsers, but we're not, some of us are dows, will douse for water, but we douse for energy. And we have tuned into, just as you would go looking for water as a source of sustenance, we look for energy as a source of, a, of sustenance and find where there's disparity in the frequencies. And then we take it to another level of our higher self and we change the frequency of that. And over the years that we've worked, we realized that all everybody on this planet can come together in circles. And we use the 12 around one principle and gather and make this transformation happen. So as large groups, we think of large groups having great energy, but they also have a great, greater ability for distortion. And so it's the smaller groups comprised around sacred geometry, sacred, ancient sacred language is what it is. It's not just lines and numbers, it's a language. And when we come together in that language from our heart, we automatically shift into a part of ourselves that we've not been able to experience for thousands of years. We go, if you would say it, backwards in time to our original blueprint and start to create and co-create. I think in the beginning I wrote something uh, it was a collective, but it's a co-creation. It's a co-creation, each one of us. Even though we may not know each other, we may not uh, come from, our indigenous ancestry isn't from the same place on the planet. We are this body of energy, collective energy. So we co-create. And I know all of you know this. It's not something you don't know. I just like to express it to people to remind everybody that this is who we really are. As we walk away from this screen and to embrace the memory of that in ourselves. And so as I put that into the field, maybe somebody can express in their own words, what they feel as this resonates with, within them. Love to hear from you because we've been working with this for years and Tyson and I and Shelly, I just came from a place today, uh, Lake Winnipesaukee that the three of us journeyed to last year in a, on an amazing journey in person and witnessed amazing things. So. Just, yeah, just wanted to add that to the field to just remind all of us that, and I have to remind myself that this is who I am. I'm not just a human being. That's only the third dimensional aspect. 
Tyson, you have anything to add to that or? Well, those are wise words. Um, yeah, the, the time that we spent together was absolutely uh, a sacred time. And um, I think that's what's exciting for me is uh, as we approach this time on the planet with these alignments is that we're presented with another sacred time uh, where the energy is flowing and streaming onto the planet. And uh, I guess we really have a choice uh, to open up to it and greet it um, as our birthright, as part of our um, upgrade on the personal level, or we can get uh, bowled over by the energy and feel that we got to do something to change the world with uh, picket signs or, or um, getting angry. Um, but new energy is going to flow at this uh, cosmic appointment we have with the star nations and uh, with this energy flowing through. So it behooves us to be able to um, prepare ourselves in whatever ceremonial way we want to cleanse and heal ourselves uh, in whatever way to allow what no longer serves us to be able to be let go of. So as that sun comes over the horizon on that auspicious day, we can fully embody that starlight, that, that sunlight, that enlightenment into the full body awareness of who we be so we don't get um, knocked about by the energy, we don't uh, get bowled over, that we can be well grounded and receive it as uh, the divine gift that it is from the center of the cosmos and that we can express our gratitude to be the conduit from the star uh, energy through us and grounding it into the heart of Mother Earth. So we become one with that force. We become the pillars of light. We become the transformative agents to bring about more light onto the planet. And who doesn't want that? I certainly want to do that. I certainly want to be part of that. I certainly want to do whatever simple things I can do in my own simple way to make that as a, a momentous a moment in my own life and the moment a momentous moment in the lives of other that I possibly can so so that's what I'm thinking about I'm just thinking wow what a unique time to be on this planet and whoa what a unique time we're coming up and we're coming up really quickly to it and I'm looking forward to it I, I really am and so um Part of the wellness show on Friday is how can you do ceremony in your backyard for those that don't know how to do it and never done it. You know, how do you lay out some crystals or crystal skulls like Charlie does? How can you create you know, a matrix using sacred geometry? How can you open it up and in contact and be the hotline to where you came from? What stardation are you part of? And um, when you do ceremony, you open yourself up to that higher vibration of who you be, and then you get to be guided. You get to be informed by the field that Charlie's talking about. You get uh, you get to be in the right place at the right time. And uh, then your life becomes like a sacred journey. It becomes like a mystical adventure. It's like things arrive that you didn't even know that you had asked for. Uh, and uh, yeah, you start to walk lightly on the earth because there's no more struggle. There's no more, uh, there's no, there's less anger. There's less resistance. There's more acceptance. There's more oneness. There's more allowing your heart to be open and to be compassionate that we're all one, always have been and always will be. And any separation, Black Lives Matter or anything else is purely illusion that we've created for whatever reason we want to help, help us waken up to remember that we always are, always have been, and always will be one and one with source. And when we forget, we are on the long path to enlightenment. And when, when we're on remember, we're on the short path to enlightenment. And that's through our heart. And Mother Earth has such a huge, gigantic heart that supports us all. Why wouldn't we want to tune into her and be part of her field. Why wouldn't we want to be nurtured by our mother? 
Why would we want to be taken care of by her? Why wouldn't we want to take care of our own mother? Why wouldn't we want to be fed by our mother? Why wouldn't we want to be clothed and taken care of in ways in which the indigenous people would be? Who wants to go back to normal or whatever normal is on this planet? I certainly do. And this is what this unique opportunity is. With this new energy is we can create a new world, a new way of being, a new way that's informed by Divine Mother and Mother Earth to live in harmony in ways that we can't even imagine. And I'm truly grateful to be here and be part of this in my own little small way. And I look forward to hearing what's passing through each one of you as you're called to be here on Mother Earth at this time to do whatever you're called to do. So that's sort of where I am at this moment. Um, finding hard to put it all into words, but uh, that's the limited way that I can do that at this moment. So uh, I'm, I'm done for the moment. I'll be still and go back into silence. That's beautiful. One thing I'm picking up is that I talked to three people today and there was a, an undertone of, of judgment. And, but the way I picked it up was that it was self-judgment. And I think it's a good reminder that some of the people like, it's so easy to judge ourselves harshly if we didn't fulfill a task, especially now when things are not so-called normal which we really know that that word in itself is questionable. But what I'm getting at is that we have to realize that self-love is where it's at. And that when we judge ourselves, we judge others. And just to be aware, catch ourselves that when we find that when at the end of the day, if that monkey ego mind says, I didn't do enough or I could have done something better, Stop it there and just embrace yourself. Just cancel that out the best way you know how and just to embrace yourself physically, mentally, whatever, however way, and just go with self-love. Thank you. I just want to say aho. I just like to say aho. Okay, well, I'm here. I just wanted to let you know I was present <laughs> and that I, I love energy. Um, I love water. I love, I love everything about life. As a matter of fact, just being alive today is such a beautiful gift. And we get to watch all this unfold and say yes, because we've heard these stories before. And yes, it's happening now. And yes, we can witness this. And um now i understand why why we went through what we went through to get here um all these things are like happening now it's such a appropriate time in my life because um i'm here i'm here in the connection field i did the self-care i did the traveling into different timelines to heal myself and my old past lives and cancel out all my soul contracts that weren't serving me and heal generations before me, heal generations after me. Um, I've done the work <laughs> and I want to say my mission is accomplished. So why am I still here? But I guess part of that journey is to be able to witness the fruition of it coming to pass it's to be to be able to um know it was dust work is not in vain um that source always leaves a remnant untouched undamaged unaffected and i get to be a part of that and I've learned now 
to be humble, remain grateful, and know what a true honor it is to be chosen by source, to be the person that carries the message, as well as listens so somebody can feel valued and connected and whole. Yeah, I'm pretty rich and full now about this time of night. So thank you. I've been sitting listening and you've given me some food for thought, so I figured I'd pipe in now if that's okay. <laughs> um, I, you, you mentioned the ancestors and that's one thing I work very closely with is the ancestors. And I follow their, their guidance. I'm a medium by birth. Um, it's the majority of my day-to-day -day work. Um, I, I, for the most part, I guess, with clients and stuff. And I I tend to feel right now that, and for a long time, I have been working and I've been of service in and within my own community, my own space, my own day-to-day -day stuff that comes to me. But for a while now, and especially now at these times, and I hear all the different roles, a witness, you know, a warrior, uh, call to action, all these different words. And for a while now, it feels like my motor's been revving and I want to get in on the front line and I want to get in there and do something, um, but I don't know where or how. So I kind of hold space. I stick to my day-to-day -day clients. I stick to building the retreat center that I'm doing. And just again, focusing on my day to day, what I'm doing and my little piece of it. But there's this overwhelming feeling and a need for me, not just to be a witness, but to participate. And I think where I am right now is really not sure how or how to, where to go about doing that. And I was really blessed about a week ago, I found this group. And I'm noticing that there's so many lovely souls here who do so much in so many different aspects. And I'm very much the type, very, people use the term eclectic or people, I, I mean, I look at it as I'm kind of a wild card. Spirits always put me in a spot where I need to be. And whether it's healing, then it's healing. Whether it's a, you know, channeling of certain, you know, words, that's what I do. So it, I'm kind of like this wild card, you know, wherever I'm kind of needed. And um, it, it, it's beautiful to connect with so many people. And I'm thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that this will kind of give me some motivation or some inspiration as to where the, that next step is or where I should take some of this overwhelming energy that I want to, you know, go somewhere with instead of just revving. So thank you. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia, for that expression. And I love the word wildcard. Uh, it triggered a lot of energy in me um, and perhaps other people here also feel that expression as a wildcard. Um, it makes me think, what does the wildcard really do in your hand and what it does is really energizes the positive energy 
to a level of winning. And we as humans think of winning as gaining something material. Yet in the spiritual will, will world, winning is just really shining as much light and positivity as we possibly can because we are these light beings. So thank you for that. And each one of us really have to figure out is how do we play ourselves as that wild card? Wild card? And as Eduardo spoke earlier, it's self-love. Self-love is really a key. It's a key to the gateway, to open that gateway in which we really get to meet ourselves as that wild card. That's what I'm seeing right now. And it's such a gift that each of you uh, have brought here and bring here tonight um, to not only express what's coming through, but to inspire us all. And this is, this is really what's happening. This is the front line. It's sometimes the front line is not what we have been taught and thought it was. Sometimes it can be just upholding the space. And I love to tell this to people. We don't hold space anymore. We have to uphold the space. We have to uphold the space and offer it to those who are opening right now as those flowers, as I spoke earlier, and let them, and let that energy that we are, that wild card, radiate that energy. And I think it was Eduardo said, it doesn't, it's, or maybe my, it's my interpretation of, it's not so much how we do it, but that we commit ourselves to do it. And the guidance will come. Um, the synchronicities, which is a language, um, will appear. And it's our tapping into those synchronicities and see them, seeing them as the sparks of energy that ignite the fuse in us to say, ah, this is, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I need to do that here. Yet we as humans, have this uh, problem of going into the mind and trying to figure it out. And uh, I know for me, that's been the challenge is to stop figuring it out, Charlie. Stop trying to figure it out. It, there's no figuring it out. It's just being it. It's just allowing yourself to tap into that energy field and know that this is your guide. It doesn't matter what form or picture or face or name we place on it. It's who you truly are in your heart. And in that moment, that self-love has to be there in order to listen. So thank you for all of this, you know, conversation tonight it's beautiful it's it's deepening all our relationships in this beautiful field of energy thank you i am complete i've been dealing with a lot of contradictions or the dualities a lot lately as well so when you mentioned wild card again it kept vibrating and echoing with me and i was like okay so this wild card you know i i can hear what you were saying about you know the the positivity and the it, you know it kind of fits in everywhere but it's like where do you actually fit in well you kind of fit in a little bit of everywhere so my next it led my next thought too is it that like that saying um, jack of all trades, but master of none, you know, and I have dabbled in so much in the energy realm and in the spiritual realm. And I'm thinking, you know, could I actually run and head and do something like this, you know, but 
you know, do I actually have the background? Do I actually have the credentials, everything that I need? Or if I did, could I do it this way? You know, and it's that back to what you were saying, the self-love, you know, the doubt, just being or just doing, and these things play out. Um, so it's interesting because again, I, 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 that duality, you know, it's a good thing and it has its benefits and you can do a lot with the wild card. Um, but can it, can, does the wild card stand on its own as well? So it's funny cause it just, it, 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 as you were speaking, my brain just started kind of doing these loop-de-loops around the whole idea of it again. <laughs> Yeah, I love the idea of the wild card, you know, but what's a wild card unless you play the wild card, right? Um, you're still wild, right? And um, then we're talking about radical heart resonance, so we're already ra radical and we're already wild. So I love that energy, whether you're going to do it as a witness, right, and watch what's unfold you uh, with compassion like the Buddha and say, well, I, you know, I see what's happening on this world, but I'm not going to be part of the world. I see the light and dark, and I see all the decisions that could be made, but those decisions are not my decisions. My decision is to just be me. I'm going to be the wild card. I'm going to step off the checkerboard game of light and dark and good and bad, right and wrong. I'm going to be the witness and watch this unfold. That's a powerful place to be. And then there's the other people that say, no, I've just got so much energy. What's the next step that's being presented to me? I've got to step into the wholeness of who I am and I've got to be. And so there's those that feel they come, have to be compelled to be and to do. So th th what I'm saying is whatever you're guided to do, you know, through the radical resonance connection with Divine Mother, then follow your heart, be in your heart, whether it's being the witness, right, to what's unfolding, or if you have to step into your truth and speak your truth for the first time, then then be that courageous one to, to do that, which is to love yourself unconditionally. And really all you have to do is show up. That's the biggest step is to show up, right? And just be you and love yourself for whatever role that you're being called to play in this amazing, amazing unfolding that we're part of. I mean, we're writing this script. We're the primary actors. We're casting the scene. We're, you know, who wants to play? And do we, are we creating the new earth? Are we creating, you know, what are we doing? And, and all of that is irrelevant, but we just show up and be. It just, we watch it all unfold like magic. We're at a magic show of miracles happening all around us, and we don't have to do really anything but be witness. Now, I'm not saying that's the only place to be. I'm just saying it's one of them. And if you feel called to step into the void and do, but then all my, by all means, do. Do it from your heart. Do it with guidance. Do it with divine spirit flowing through you, every cell of your being. Be authentic. Be radical. Be the wild card. Yes, sirree. <laughs> Uh oh, I'm done. And when you say wild, right away it takes me into the wild, the woods, the forest, back into nature. It's just, let's go back. Okay. Yes, uh, that's so true. Civilization comes from civil or, call, or, or creating a wall around the city to protect you from the wilderness. We're saying, forget the walls in the city, you know, forget being locked into your apartment, forget the shutdown, go into the wilderness, right? Go into the wildness of nature, be renewed, be revitalized, listen to the, her heartbeat. Uh, Regain your strength. You, you will be taken care of. It's a covenant between you and Divine Mother and, and, and Mother Earth that if you are one with her, you will always be in the right place at the right time. You could never get it wrong, even if you tried. But only thing is you have to open your heart. You have to trust that you're one with all that is, and then you're safe, right? 
Oh, I gotta be quiet again. I love what. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Did you want to speak? Go ahead. And I was thinking, like, are you hearing me? I said, I'm feeling like a song because everybody keeps saying something. It's a song, it's a hot song, and it keeps wanting to be sung. And so <laughs> it's just, it's a song that it keeps wanting to be sung. And I'm like, okay, is can I sing this song? Or do I sing this song at the end? It's like, where does the song want to be sung? Yeah, it's like, put your hand on your heart. And it's a hot song, you probably all know it. And it goes like, I can hear my heart beat. I can hear my heart beat. Beat into the rhythm of a freedom song. Beat into the rhythm of a freedom song. I can hear my heart beat. I can hear my heart beat. Beat into the rhythm of a freedom song. Beat into the rhythm of a freedom song. When I say yes to the beat in me, I can set my spirit free. When I say yes to the beat in me, I can set my spirit free. I can hear my heart beat. I can hear my heart beat. Beat into the rhythm of a freedom song. Beat into the rhythm of a freedom song. When I say yes to the beat in me, I can set my spirit free. When I say yes to the beat in me, I can set my spirit free. I can hear my heart beat. I can hear my heart beat. Beat into the rhythm of a freedom song. Beat into the rhythm of a freedom song. If it's okay, can I please address Claudia, please? Thank you, Ms. Iyat Tahira. I appreciate you. But um, Claudia, I just want to let you know that yes, you qualify. And <laughs> yes, follow your bliss. And your happiness meter spikes. And you are divinely guided and the universe loves and supports you. Thank and you, there is room. Yeah, and there is room on Saturdays and Sundays. There's a couple openings in our schedule. So please uh, keep in touch with um, Miss Shelley. Or all of you guys trying to recruit me all of the time. I showed up and everybody wanted to recruit me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. We just, You're welcome. Oh, that's all. We just love you. Right. Well, I was, I think I was waiting for you guys. I really was calling y'all into my being. And so I'm grateful to be here. We're on this platform with all of us. You just sing your soul, sister. Just sing it out. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That was also for Claudia, too. I needed to let her know. Thank you so much, Robin. And your song, Ia, was beautiful. It totally warmed my heart. Thank you so much. Claudia, I'm so glad you showed your face. I didn't see your face. I just saw a name. So now that I see your face, it's so beautiful. It's almost like it's ancient to me in, in so many ways. I don't know. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Like ancient in a beautiful way. Like not, yeah. That's all I can say. It is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, like the no, you can see my grays, right? <laughs> it's not even gray. It's something else. It's something radiant. It's something alive and beautiful. 
Shiblin. You're time, timeless. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm watching. It's like, oh my God, she is one of those ancestors that, and I'm not, I mean, I just saw this energy flooding around like golden energy, like, ooh, beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful woman. What a wonderful gathering. So many you know, beautiful souls being here. Um, I don't, I, Shelly has left us in the uh, field here um, and we can continue. Karen is visible. Karen, would you like to speak into the field? I don't think anybody's coming on until 10 o'clock. So, um, and I don't know how to get out of here other than, or shut this down. So we're well, all good. We shut it down whenever we want, but we want everybody to have an opportunity to speak their voice into the truth of who they be into the field. But I just wanted to say, you know, Rock and Robin, I'm getting this message that you ought to consider being a DJ. I don't know why I'm getting this message, but <laughs> it's a pretty clear message. Um, she's duly just noted, <laughs> duly noted, and I, I, I'm very, <laughs> I kind of sort of know why that's happening because I've been a DJ all my life already. So um, that's why they call me Rockin' Robin. Yeah, you're <laughs> Rockin' Robin DJ. Yeah, I, I was DJ Rockin' Robs on Kili Radio 90.1 FM. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I was also I'm getting it from your CCN FM 100. I, I, I'm very well known in Hawaii. Yeah. Well, there I you are. Stuff like that. Yeah. But good insight, bro. Good insight. Hi, I was just wanting to say thank you to everyone. It's been wonderful. I missed little bits here and there when the power went out. And the rain's calming down enough that I don't have to have my head stuck to hear y'all. So hopefully you can hear me not too bad. Um, yes, we can hear you. And thank you, Karen, for showing up uh, yet again, uh, becoming a regular and sharing your from wherever you are into the field. It's greatly appreciated. I'm in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, one of my favorite places on earth. Yeah, it's a rural area and we do get our power outages. <laughs> when that goes, so does the internet until it comes back on. But that was, these were short ones at least. And I appreciated everything everyone said. I was thinking, what would come to me, but you were all expressing everything that I could have possibly shared. So it was very beautiful and I enjoyed it so much and I'm happy to be here. So well, thank, thank you all. So we have some other people on the call that I can see that haven't had a chance to speak into the field or to give us some feedback or give us an idea of where they are. If you'd like to uh, come forth and uh, share a few words uh, before we call this a wrap. Uh, we, we would be greatly appreciated. And if not, that's okay too. But uh, the field is open. Hi, this is Jerry. I am in Williams, Oregon. I just was like, I finished a class with Jose, his, cal his Mayan calendar class. And so I was like, I'll just go see if there's something happening in the field. So I came on in, I didn't catch much, but I'll just bring some of the shiny energy. He was doing a water ceremony and kind of just giving us a heads up on the energies of the solstice and then the next Venus portal. So just bringing to the field, like the awareness of really big opportunities for us to work with in harnessing those energies coming up. Well, thank you, thank you so much. And that's exactly what we were talking about, this auspicious time on planet Earth when all these energies are coming into conjunction and let's have them conjuncting in our heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's, that's part of this whole process is to recognize ourselves in each other. 
and um, not feel so isolated anymore. Uh, there's just so many people uh, trusting their hearts and opening to who they truly are that this connection field really brings people from all aspects of life together uh, to remind them that, you know, what their journey is, is really important. And it's not um, to be taken lightly. It's really who we truly are. And, and the, the call right now is for all of us to access that truth as best we can and uh, know that, yeah, there are people who are perhaps better versed in something than we are or uh, may not be aware of other things. And that's how we, we teach each other and we ex explore each other's um, energy and fields and, and collaborate, really. You know, not just co-create, but collaborate together. Uh, become one whole and uh, yeah so it's a it's important for all of us to you know tap in and just embrace the the truth that comes through us that the world we've been brought up in as um, younger generations we were told not to think that not to do this this is not real um, and it's part of our promise really to ourselves for being here right now is to pass this on to the generations of children that are now coming in because their 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 energy is more crystalline their structure is more crystalline and they're able to hold more energy and uphold more energy um, and this is what is needed right now as all of these energies that come in and especially through the solstice now and and all of this it needs to um, be stored and it will be stored in a lot of these children and uh, so i find that as part of my role um and my my story is really i died 28 years ago uh literally died and, and robin's heard this story before i died in a motorcycle accident and um, in that death process, uh, in my returning, and I'm not going to go into the whole uh, aspect of that, but in my returning, I knew that my purpose was, and my purpose was to anchor peace, light, and love into all forms of life, whether I understood them as forms of life or not. And what the message was, was do not let anything pass you that you may take for granted because nothing that you are going to be engaged in is to be taken for granted. And so this wisdom uh, was an agreement and many of us have had made those agreements, uh, whether you've had death experiences or not. And uh, so, you know, again, our teachers and our ancestors and our our guides in this lifetime have represented that as best they can. And uh, so it's just a matter of being that wild card and knowing that you don't know when you're going to be played. You don't know. And it's okay not to know that if you stay attuned to your heart, the moment will come and the energy will direct you. And it's only our human brain that will tell us no. And this is what we're breaking out of. We're breaking out of this paradigm, this paradigm of structure that has been superimposed over who we truly are. So it's, it's wonderful to gather here and, and just express that and, and share in this, this connection field and this field of this, you know, earth heart resonance, radical earth heart resonance, because we are the radicals. We are the radicals and we know that. And we've, most of us have been radical most of our lives. I was radical before I died. And I became more radical after I died. So it's, it's all important to just embrace. And again, I go back to what Eduardo, that self-love and release this in this time right now where all of this trauma that is playing around us is actually an opportunity 
an opportunity for us to embrace that in ourselves and release it and release it forever. So again, this is an inner journey into that silent space, that stillness, that energy field, which can't be controlled. No matter who thinks they want to control it or try to control it, it cannot be controlled. It was never meant to be controlled. And we're now being assisted by so many beings that it, it doesn't even do witnessing to try to describe them anymore. But every fragment, every water droplet that we are is receiving the information. And it's only a matter of us just letting go of the thought patterns that have been entrained into this human brain and and to not defy them but just respect them for what they were and they no longer serve they no longer have any power over any of us the only power that we need to be uh, attuned to is the power of our heart this is it right here. This is the entrance way, the gateway to all of the dimensions. And it's through that gateway and rising higher within that, that we begin to receive the, the messages and the answers and the synchronicities and the moments in time, what we call time. Uh, it's a human creation, but that's okay. But that moment we call uh, aha that aha moment and look for those, look for those synchronicities that go, ah, yes, I get it. Each one of us are gonna receive those more rapidly now because of the energies that are now coming in and more clearly now. And so, you know, I just encourage everybody to uh, be witness for yourself, be witness for yourself and embrace that and trust that because that you're when in reality what you're doing is trusting your higher dimensional self which is always connected to that which we call the other world however you want to label it or describe it and our labeling and describing of things is limited because in truth there is there are no words that the human mind can describe that realm and that's what we're tapping into a realm that is not explainable to the human mind and as you hear my dog barking it is the <laughs> she she understands none of this so yet she dwells and operates from her spirit heart as do all the animals as do the trees as do the rivers as if they're all we're all connected we're all connected and it's important for us to really just listen, just to say when we're in that place of indecision, just be still and trust, trust, trust your heart to make the decision, not your brain. Didn't mean to rant on by that, but that's okay. That's who I am. <laughs> that's why I don't do shows. <laughs> I talk too much. Well, from my point of view, uh, you can keep talking as far as I'm concerned, because you're you're talking to wisdom, you're talking to truth, you're talking to spirit, you're letting the energy flow for you. You're the spokesperson, you know. You're the riverman. You're speaking on behalf of nature that doesn't have a voice. You're allowing the ancestors to speak through you. You're allowing the communion with the crystal skulls to be your channel. You're uh, connecting with your ancestors that are your future and your past and they're in there now. So, Charlie, as far as I can go, say you can keep on talking, brother. Keep on talking. Keep on talking and we'll keep on becoming and uh, becoming one with you through the heart. So, thank you. Thank you. So, um, 
don't be shy, people. If you've got things you want to say, and this is your opportunity to step into a very safe sanctuary and uh, speak your truth or tell us what you're struggling with and uh, tell us what you're being enlightened by or what's the spirit moving through you. Hi, this is Jerry again. I am so grateful that I stepped into this container for this moment and taking all those words that you just expressed, Charlie Riverman, and I'm going to do my daily flute video because I've been recording every day for, uh, I think this is the 74th day, uh, and sharing that on Facebook and doing the same, just letting all of that speak through the flutes and then sharing words uh, so I'm gonna, while the sun is setting, I'm gonna take all of this beauty and this, just the beautiful, yeah, just like the joyous heart, spirit field here and, and put, take that and do that recording. I will see you all again soon. Thank you, Thank Jerry. You. And having witnessed your flute playing, play on, please. It's beautiful. Yeah, play, in my, play on, Maestro. Do you have a moment to play a little flute for us or are you... Have to run sure. No, no, I could do that. Hold on. I'll grab a drop my phone. I'll grab a flute. <clears throat> hey, look at all those flutes in the back there. Oh, there's every yeah. color you could imagine, every species hey. of tree. I can see right. cedar ones there. I can see something looks like poplar. I don't know. All different. I'm a, I'm a maker. I've been making flutes for almost 30 years. So a lot of what's in the house right there are not actually playable. Things I need to go to my shop that I haven't reset, I moved over the winter. All right, so I'll share a song with you and then I'll go share a song with Facebook. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you and bless you, dear heart. It was Thanks. beautiful. So we're coming up to the half hour here and um, we've gone longer than normal, but we let's have another five minutes for those that still have uh, an opportunity to, to speak into this sacred vessel, this this uh, zone of protection and this plasticity of, of vibrational frequency, the, the true heart of the collective whole, the connection field, the heart zone of our hearts that are interwoven. 
uh, right here, right now, in this sacred space. So if you feel called to speak in your truth into this, um, into this sacred space, this is your, your time as we begin to bring this, uh, this time together to a close. Well, it seems like, Charlie, everybody's just about done. So how about taking us home to the stars? You've got your mic on. I must have muted myself. I don't know whether I'm muted or unmuted. One yeah, never knows. Always where mute I'm. or unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the one thing I want you all to remember is to be joyful. That when we take ourselves too seriously, we become dangerous to ourselves. And so in this process of tapping into the silence and tapping into the energy fields, be joyous. Know that this is a gift. This is a gift that each of us are, as well as tap into. So with that said, I want to close um, with a, a little prayer that I do as a water protector and per blesser of waters. And what it is, it's, it's taking the words of Dr. Masuro Emoto to uh, another level to add into it the relationship of who we are as water. Um, the name Riverman is, was given to me and I didn't understand what it meant when it was given to me. But this, when we embrace the water, we are tapping into life. Um, the saying water is life is far deeper than most of us can really tap, dive into. But as we dive into it and swim in that simple phrase, water is life, we realize that thousands, if not millions of years ago, the water that exists in this planet existed in the universe. And that as we're born into and through water, we are as ancient as it is. And we existed on some level before Earth. And this galaxy may have even been created. That's how ancient we are. And those are the ancestors we're calling forth to be with us now. So as I do this, I bless the water, every molecule of water in your body, knowing how ancestral it is, knowing how it's the source of our presence here. I love you. I thank you. I respect you. I am you, you are me. Together, we are unity. <sighs> thank you for all being here tonight and thank you for your sharing and your wisdom. Uh, it's enlightened me and Tyson and each other and the world, whoever may be watching this. And it was great to be here and a joy as we close our end of the deal. And we have a half an hour before another group comes in and I will try to play host here. Um, and I'm, I don't know what the uh, group is. I think it's a wrapping up with a ceremony and drumming, oh. if I remember correctly. Oh, that's right, yeah. Okay, that's what it, yeah, you're right. It's the drumming from, um, I, I can't ring it up. But So um, I wish you all a good evening, a good week, a good day, uh, a good life, a good uh, 10,000 years. It's, it's all, it's all perfect. It's all perfect. Yeah.
Thank for you, here. Charlie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tyson, for your amazing energy field and uh, your presence. I need for you. Be I must tell Shelly that you guys are beautiful. I must tell <laughs> Shelly. <laughs> yeah, you guys are beautiful. Thank you. Well, uh, we're just listening to the Divine Mother flow through our hearts and uh, trying to express it as uh, as males. Uh, and uh, so we bless the, the Divine Mother for all of this energy. Thank you. Yes, thank, you. thank you. So everybody be radical. Be their wild. Stay in your heart and be one with the Divine Mother and Mother Earth. See you next week. Same time, same place. Be healthy. Matthias, Matthias, thank you so much. Yes. My and seeing is the power of song and prayer. So come back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye.